Certainly the most fascinating grave here in Tampa is that of Mr. Hubbard, a Cuban pirate of a different sort. Now we don't know his first name, we don't know any details surrounding the case, we just know that he was found dead in the woods on June 18, 1850. However, Hubbard is not a Spanish name, it is not a Cuban name. So my favorite conjecture about this is that he was a member of the Narciso Lopez expedition to Cuba. Basically, Lopez up in Tennessee started advertising to these poor dirt farmers in Appalachia, we're going on an expedition to California, and when we get there, we're gonna, you know, mine our weight in gold and come back here rich men. Now all of these men found themselves on a boat off of Cardenas, Cuba, and realized that they were on a filibustering expedition to overthrow the Spanish government with only a couple hundred people, and they knew it wouldn't work. So the first thing they did was they kidnapped the mayor, they burned down his house, and then they marched to the nearest tavern and drank what was called an unfathomable amount of liquor before the Spanish army came in and mopped the floor with them. They kind of took off in a boat over to Key West, pursued in, in hot pursuit by the Spanish, who were firing at them the whole way. Well, their boat crashed off the shores of Key West, and it seems to be that the entire expedition just sort of marched up north. And this is through the swamps, the Everglades. Certainly a huge chunk of them were wiped out by alligators and snakes. Who knows what happened to the majority of them? And by the time they reached central Florida and places like Tampa, they were a ragged looking crew. In fact, two days after Hubbard was found in the swamps, another group of them came up through Tampa and they looked half starved and they were still wearing the signature red uniform that Lopez gave them on the expedition to overthrow the Spanish government. So he was marked down as a pirate because he was a part of a filibustering expedition of a ragged tag group of desperados, most of which didn't even know what their true purpose was on that boat until they got to Cuba and started burning down homes. And I feel that he is possibly a forgotten military, well, a filibuster. I don't know if I would call him a hero because of this mission. But another thing that was brought up as a possible explanation for why he's buried here is that he might be the father of another Hubbard, a Daniel Hubbard, who was an orphan kidnapped by Seminoles a few months after he died. And this Hubbard was going out on his horse to do some tasks at the homestead, and his horse came back without him in it with his trousers braided into the horse's mane. However, when historians go to take a look at the record of homesteaders in the area, there was not a Hubbard to be found. Now, judging from what happened afterwards, the sheriff kidnapped three Seminoles at random and put them in a jail cell, and when it became clear that there would not be another renewed Indian war, nobody was really taking the bait, those three Seminole were hanged inside of their cells, and then their cells were burnt down. So it's very obvious that it was a fake pretext to start another Indian war. But in my opinion, Mr. Hubbard was probably on the Lopez expedition to Cuba, the very ill-fated Lopez expedition. In fact, Lopez himself was captured, probably tortured to death by the Spanish government there. But a interesting fact about that expedition is the flag used by Narciso Lopez is now the Cuban national flag of today. Very unusual. And I just wanted to show you where all these graves are. Over here is the front of the cemetery, and if you just follow the path until it ends, right back here, and you can also use that white mausoleum as a marker, here are the two graves of Cuban pirates, of Jose Perfino, or El Indio, and the man who was found just a couple months later, Mr. Hubbard. Now as you walk around this plot, you can also see Charles Owens, who was hanged in 1882. Again, very little is known of this man, and buried right in front of the two pirates are, well, you've got Taylor, who died in 1906, and then, uh, very interesting, you've got a man who drowned at Bell's Wharf in 1868, and then Adam, who was a black slave, lynched in 1859, and again, almost nothing is known about Adam other than that he was lynched. And here, is basically, this is the poor man's cemetery. This is where they would bury their slaves in Tampa. In fact, here's a memorial at the Oak Lawn Cemetery for the slaves. And uh, Sally McDonald was very likely the daughter of a slave because she's buried right next to Willowsby, another slave who died in 1857, and another slave of the Leslie family who died in 1850. Very early settlers of the area. 
In the back of the Tampa City Cemetery, surrounded by the graves of escaped slaves and other desperados, you have the graves of two Cuban pirates who were killed in 1850. Now, very little is known about them, but they've become very famous over the years because of their descriptions. And I wanted to tell you the history that we do know about them. So the first one to be killed committed a crime in 1849 for which he would be shot. His name was Jose Perfino, but he was known in the community as El Indio. Now at this time in Tampa, the entire community was white homesteaders, a couple desperados, Indians who were always conflicting with the white homesteaders, and a lot of Cubans. And there was a lot of trade to and from Spanish Cuba, some of which was illicit. Well, he's never mentioned in the reports as a pirate per se, but Perfino was a Cuban and he had all these fanciful stories that he would make for himself. And he would always talk up a big game with a cigarette in his mouth. But one day, he seems to have gotten into a scuffle with the Spanish owner of a clam shop and he shot him. And that was about 11 p.m. at night. Well, he runs off into an alleyway and they find him a couple hours later hiding at a horse stables. And they give him representation because he can't afford his own lawyer. And this is my favorite little part of this story. His lawyer would later go on to become a senator, but at the time his lawyer was so drunk that he passed out in an alleyway and locals covered him in molasses and corn and pigs literally ripped his clothes off. And that's the lawyer representing this guy. Well, he realizes he's absolutely screwed, so he manages to escape from jail. And a couple months later, he's shot by a soldier at a nearby fort. Now, Jose Perfino, very little known about him, but a fascinating man. And I wish we knew more, but we just, we don't.